Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I would like to look at a mod for Kerbal Space Program called Better Than Starting Man. Why is it called Better Than Starting Man? Well, you start career mode without any manned capsules. You start. This is a, a mod which is designed to revamp career mode, redesign it so that the progression of technology is a little more realistic, which means you don't start out by you know, putting a Kerbal into a capsule and going for altitude records, you start using very simple automatic probes. So the only option initially for contracts is set an altitude record of 12,500 meters. Uh, and the only gear you've got to do this is the Stapotnik probe, which of course has a single attach node below it. You have this Kestes rocket, which is of course a, a it's a play on Estes rockets, right? So this is a solid rocket motor. You cannot even right click on this and tweak the amount of fuel on it. It comes straight from the manufacturer and the manufacturer would uh, have a fit if you decided to open it up and say perhaps remove the fuel from it. Now to collect science you still have to do it the old way, but unlike the old way you can't just have your uh, antenna sticking out the side because massless parts for this science gear no, no, they decided, the developers of uh, the mod have said, no, no, we don't believe in massless parts. So you have to try and line these things up here. And what I usually do is use symmetry to try and make sure it's on the middle. And, uh, yeah, try to match that up similarly. Uh, get it as close to the middle as possible. And hopefully that'll work. Okay, so that's me put a thermometer, a transmitter, and this on it. And our whole goal is to get above 12,500 meters, so let's launch. Now, a normal Kerbal space program, of course, what you're doing right away is you're immediately wanting to log temperature. Oh, temperature scan from Kerbin surface. Zero science, yes. Yeah, that's not going to work. No, you got to get up into the air. Moreover, you've got to get up above 12,500 meters. See, if you log temperature, nope, your altitude is too low to collect useful data. So uh, let's get above 12,500. And uh, of course, I have absolutely no control. This does not have any reaction wheels in it. Uh, this spacecraft doesn't have any throttling or any thrust vectoring. So this thing just more or less goes straight. Now let's collect the temperature data. It seems to be getting colder as the altitude increases. Great, transmit the data and we'll just time accelerate. So you don't have parachutes either, which means this thing is just gonna fly a ballistic arc to about, ooh, to almost 30,000 meters. That's pretty impressive actually. And then it will fall back towards the surface yeah, basically being pulled inexorably down by gravity until it meets its fate. The atmosphere will perhaps slow its descent a little, but uh, you know, once it gets high enough, that atmosphere will actually turn out to be deadly because this mod, of course, works with deadly re-entry. And bang. Yes, your early missions are gonna end with a bang since that's there's no way to land them. So let's go to the space center and see what's happened. Well, first thing is we've now been able to unlock the next node, which gives us basic rocketry. This gives us the pot one battery, which does not contain a potato. We have an, some more solid rocket boost boosters, which can only attach radially. And we now have the press mat barometer. Uh, so yeah, we've got that. The next set of nodes kind of starts to differentiate a little. The only option available to me is to set an altitude record of 30,000 meters. And so I've got to figure out how to make this go above 30,000 meters. Well, one way would be to just take off all this stuff and let it fly straight. The other way is to use these radial, radially mounted engines. Put a couple of them on there. There we go. And of course, make sure they fire in sequence so that we are spreading the thrust throughout the whole flight. Now, if we're going to collect extra science data, we can collect science from uh, 30,000 meters. 30,000 meters is kind of the boundary between low and, and high altitude. So I can, uh, if I can carry everything up to that altitude, we should be able to collect science for, for everything, right? 
just so happens, by the way, that these batteries weigh the same as the barometer, or they mass the same as the barometer, which means by extension, they weigh the same, but we care about mass. So we're going to collect two science data points with this and one science data point with the thermometer. And we're going to beat, uh, yeah, 30,000 kilometers, 30,000 meters, not 30,000 kilometers. Okay, and let's see if this works. So we're going to fire these engines first, of course. They will accelerate us up very quickly. They will burn out and then we'll switch over to the middle engine without ditching these things. So they are... Now you see we're actually slowing down early. Oh, we're turning over just a bit. Hopefully that won't affect our final altitude. Okay, so 12,500 meters. Time to run a barometer scan. Flying low. The atmosphere pressure seems to be dropping as you gain altitude. Of course it is! That's science for you. Now we're going to continue and hopefully get above 30 kilometers. Nine and bingo! Okay, collect thermometer data. Pretty darn chilly out there. Out there? The probe is hardly, uh, the probe doesn't really care, right? It's out there. Log pressure data. The atmosphere has become incredibly thin. So yeah, once again, all that's left for me to do, now that we've transmitted the scientific data, I did transmit that, didn't I? Oh, there we go. Yeah, I don't know why it never got transmitted. Uh-oh, we've been damaged due to lack of power. Well, hopefully I got all the science data that I needed. Anyway, we're falling back to the planet now, and of course I can just cut this out and go straight back to the space center through the power of editing. Okay, and with 20 more science, of course, we can pick one of the next nodes to unlock. And there's, it's interesting here, they've got a few different things going on. Well, first of all, they've got these uh, scaled down parts. This is the LVT-15, which is if you want to get, you know, liquid fueled rockets, this is the way to go. Uh, with basic flight control, you get military missions, and a lot of the military missions generally involve putting a warhead, or actually crashing a warhead, into a specific region. Finally, in survivability, you have the KK-11 or KK-2 surplus cockpit. Kerbal Kind long ago learned to put violence behind us and resolve our differences through vigorous games of badminton. Thus, such technology is a part of a past we would all rather forget. However, now that we've taken up sticking stuff to rockets, why don't we borrow one of these from the museum and see what happens? Warning, this cockpit is not pressurized. We're trying to figure out what that word actually means. Thus, flying at extreme altitudes may void the warranty on any contained kerbals. And yeah, I literally did this. I built one of these things for an altitude record and I killed Jebediah by flying too high. Uh, but of course, that's not going to happen this time because I know it's going to happen. So yeah, the, the missions will change now that I have access to manned technology. Incidentally, over here, the administration building, none of the strategies work anymore. You've got uh, basically empty strategies at this time. Bling, we in the finance division believe that you absolutely have to dress for success. Uh, to that end, we wish to invest in gold lapel pins and cufflinks made of moon rocks for, an, uh, for our entire staff. Uh, ever tried consuming mystery goo? Well, we sure have. Come over by the science department for a swinging goo party and leave your inhibitions at the door. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, frankly, I'm sick of wearing this suit all the time. Any chance we could implement casual Fridays so I can wander around in the buff once a week? Uh, after analyzing our various market trends, we think that our operation could use more synergy. We're not entirely sure what that means or what it'll do, but it's all the rage these days. Ah, it's definitely all the rage. I'm accepting that for sure. Okay, and what is all the rage in terms of science? Well, we can co conduct a weather survey which is collect stuff which we've already done. Uh, we can escape the atmosphere. We could test the parachute in flight. Um, I'm not sure I'll be moving fast enough to try that, but we could try it anyway. Yeah, let's do that. Accept the manned altitude record and accept the parachute because we are going to want to test this. Okay, so out with the old and in with the new. Get rid of these batteries. Get rid of this barometer thingy. 
you get rid of that one strip this off and what we're gonna put in its place is the KK2 the KK12 or KK11 or whatever uh, so this is actually a scaled down version if you look at it it's actually slightly smaller than a regular cockpit so either regular mark 2 or mark whatever mark 1 cockpit uh, there we go oh yes phone ringing there okay uh yeah just need a little bit more work on the staging there Hopefully this will carry the Kerbals to new frontiers of awesome. Jebediah Kerman is the pilot. The main trick will be not flying too high, because too high makes him die. Okay, 12,500 meters, here we go. And I'm throttling up through force of habit. Now, and once again, no control with this thing. It doesn't have any internal controls. Just trying to roll it does nothing. Jebediah Kerman is entirely along for the ride without any uh, without any help, basically. Any way to control what's happening here. Okay, fire the next engine. We need to get above 12,500. That's where we can actually collect our low altitude data. Starting to roll over despite not, you know, despite being completely symmetrically loaded. That's possibly, you know, a physics glitch caused by, you know, the system being imperfectly modelled. Who knows? I'm just wondering whether we'll actually hit our altitude in question because we're stuck. Come on! Come on! Yes! Just made it and no more. Crew report. You record the crew's assessment of the situation. Great, I'm going to keep that data. And... Oh! Test altitude. Oh dear. Okay, my altitude isn't high enough, and I'm not moving fast enough. So I will not be checking the the. I will not be testing the parachute on this flight. I mean, obviously, I will be using the parachute because without it, I will be killing off Jebediah Kerman, and that would be bad karma, right? And touchdown! Yes, Jebediah Kerman survives. Look, he can probably EVA as well without a helmet. Can he collect science data? No, of course he can't. Let's get back inside just in case it doesn't call it correctly uh, reward us with the rewards. Oh, look, I actually get a mission summary for Untitled Spacecraft. That's excellent. I get a crew report worth 15 science. And uh, next, we recovered some parts. And we recovered Jebediah Kerman, who gained some experience. Okay, well, I guess since we're doing this, we should probably unlock basic flight control with winglets and military missions and stuff. So what's in the next nodes? Oh, oh we have a mech jeb installed in this. I'm not going to use it, but it's there. We have better pre cockpits, including the Mark Zero pressurized cockpit. N not rated for vacuum, so you can go to super high altitudes, but you can't go into vacuum. We get the mystery goo containment unit, and we get a better potato battery. The pot represents significant significant advances in agri or electrical engineering that we have allowed us to both increase capacity and reduce the weight ratio of our previous models. After our experiments with historical replicas proved less than successful, we decided that perhaps designing our own cockpits using modern technology might be a better approach. We even painted the bottom black to make it look more high tech. Warning, this cockpit is pressurized. We figured that bit out and thus can be used at higher altitudes than the previous model, but exposing it to vacuum may have undesirable results. Yes, okay. <laughs> Dumpster dive. Yeah, they've re redone a lot of these things. What does it say? We've been experimenting with a new and exciting concept that our scientists like to refer to as throttle control, and the LVT-15 is the result. Don't mind the 30 on the side of it. That's just surplus panel from something else we've been working on. Any mildly explosive heat buildup you may observe in operation is clearly nothing to worry about. And we'll be sure to have that all worked out for the future release. It's an alpha after all. Well, I can't research that right now, but what can I, what can I do? I could test things. I could set a manned altitude record of 30,000 meters. Although, actually, I'm not sure I've done... I'm not sure I've got a way to do that. Uh... Hmm. Here's a problem. None of my missions are doable, I don't think, given what I've got. Ooh, dear, that could be a problem. 
Uh, set a manned altitude record of... I perhaps should have unlocked liquid fueled rockets so I could do these things, right? Um, escape the atmosphere might actually be possible. Let's do that. Accept that contract. That will at least get that contract out of the way. Okay, so here goes nothing. I think I kind of stupidly put myself in a corner because the only way to advance is to get more science and the only science available is outside the atmosphere. The new instrument which I unlock, the gravioli detector, requires me to fly it into space. Uh, and it's actually too heavy to fly into space unless I have the... Um, unless I have the liquid fuel system, which I haven't unlocked. So instead, I'm using the fins to keep this thing flying straight, and I'm going to pause and start firing now. So what I was doing there, the pause, was because I was going so fast that the deceleration was very, very high. So I waited for my the deceleration due to wind resistance to drop to about 1G before I fired up the main engine again. Uh, and that really, that actually helps just a little because if you accelerate, if you try to go much higher than uh, terminal velocity, then you will have, uh, you will be wasting fuel. So I just need to get above 70 kilometers and this may not be the best design, but it's the best I can come up with. We can fit a single scientific instrument on it. There it is, the temperature, the thermometer. We need to carry it outside the atmosphere and collect just enough science to make sure that we can continue this quest to do science things or whatever. Okay, 23 kilometers, 24. We're hoping to get about 900 meters per second on this. Oh, yes, okay, not quite. We definitely... I think we might just be able to get outside the atmosphere. Might just be able to get outside the atmosphere. We're going to coast all the way to altitude. If you don't know, the, the rule of thumb for how high you will go you know, in the Kerbin's gravity field, if you start going up at, say, a velocity of 700 meters per second, right? You divide that by 10, right? Which gives you 70. So seven that's 70 seconds to slow down to zero. So 70 times 700 is about 49,000. And then you divide that number by two, which means about tw uh, 24,500. So you're going to go about 25 kilometers. And successfully, we have put this we have put this thing just above the atmosphere into low space. We've logged the temperature, we've collected the data, and now we're going to fall back. And probably deadly re-entry will destroy this spacecraft. But you do not need to bear witness to this thanks to the power of editing. And indeed, here we go back at the uh, back at the space center. We have 11 sites, so I guess I'm going to need to fly my pressure barometer up there. Oh, look, and we have this small warhead to old airfield mission here. So this is a military mission, which I probably can't fly since I don't have liquid-fueled rockets. Shortly after the founding of our space program, the public outcry over what we would do if we were suddenly invaded by big beige men reached a fever pitch. Our society became plagued by protests, snack sort shortages, mass suicides, and the leveling of almost all above-ground structures on the planet. In the hope that we might not be noticed by the monsters that many feared lay in wait beyond our atmosphere. In response, the KFC, commanded by Colonel Sanders obviously, was established an elite fighting force whose mission was to anticipate the external threats we may face in our exploration of the cosmos, prepare for them and then send them home crying to their tall, skinny, freakishly pale mummies. Who are we fighting against? No ideas, but as soon as we figure that out, we'll be ready. And indeed, if this whole career mode sounds interesting, you should check it out. It's better than Starting Man. It's by Flower Child and, of course, many others now. It's available on the forums. Uh, check it out. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.